Um, psychological and operational. Um, how do these two things uh, stand in the way of uh, what you're calling utility marketing? Yeah, so so utility, which of course is is spelled Y O utility for the right. uh, grammar <laughs> police, uh, uh, and, and the way we define it in the book is that it's it's marketing so useful, people would pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's marketing that has intrinsic and inherent value, so much so that if you said, "Hey, would you kick in a couple of dollars for this?" people would say, "Yeah, you know what? I actually would pay for that because right. it's it's that useful." To do that kind of marketing, to adopt that sort of strategy as a business is fundamentally different than what we've done in the past, which is find target audience and shout at them. <laughs> uh, and, and so it really requires two shifts in the organization. Right. Um, the first, as you mentioned, is psychological to get your head around the fact that we can give people things of value we don't have to ask them for the sale today, uh -huh. but if we do that enough times, if we are truly useful, eventually those customers will connect the dots and they will reward us with attention and sales and loyalty and advocacy and all the things that we care about. The other issue is operational because this kind of marketing requires you to create things that actually have value, whether it's a, an ebook, a series of videos, a blog, a mobile app, a, you know, there's a lot of examples in the book. And many marketing teams and many companies and, and many small business people um, just don't have experience making that kind of stuff. Right. Um, that doesn't mean it's difficult necessarily. It's not. But, but they just don't have experience. And that's where the operational shift has to come into play. Mm. You know, in the book you talk about uh, your customers' expectations are changing. And uh, I think you, know, you, you provide a, a great example of Amazon and how uh, back in the 90s they yeah. rolled out the, uh, the new kind of navigation uh, which we're also familiar with today, um, yeah. but it seems like your point is really about how we can become a, a leader in our industry in, in marketing. Or each of us, and you know, each each of our organizations, we can become that leader. Yeah, and and that leadership can transcend the boundaries of your industry. Mm -hmm. What what I hear a lot, especially when I talk to business to business companies, right, who who are maybe not doing um, a lot of sexy marketing, right? They're not Pringles or whatever. Right. Um, what they say is, well, that's great, but nobody in our industry is doing that or, or we don't need to know how to do that because uh, you know, we sell insurance or, or we're a bank or whatever the case is. But, but what people don't realize is that it's an interconnected world now. So if Pringles or Amazon, as I talked about in the book, right. does some sort of marketing approach or changes their website, that impacts your customers because your customers may be buying banking services from you, but they're buying Pringles from them. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing in marketing impacts the expectations of your customers. So mm -hmm. it's not about you know, what are the people in your particular business category doing. Mm -hmm. It's what is the whole world doing in marketing. Mm -hmm. So if other companies, um, regardless of industry, are embracing these kind of principles, your customers begin to expect that from you. So what are a few basic steps that companies uh, can do to create utility? So the, the, the best step, um, the first best step, mm -hmm. is to really understand what your customers need. And that sounds patently obvious, but mm -hmm. it's not in practice. Um, because what you're trying to do with utility is, is deliver real value, right? right. And, and a lot of times that isn't necessarily value about your products and services per mm -hmm. se. It's, it's about something else. One of my favorite examples in the book uh, is from one of our clients, uh, Columbia Sportswear. And Columbia sells, you know, jackets and outdoor right, gear right, and pants right. and stuff, right? So they have a mobile app called What Not to Do in the Greater Outdoors, K-N-O-T. Okay. And it actually shows you how to tie knots uh -huh. on your phone. I actually used it the other day. I had the kids out on the lake, and we had to tie an inner tube to the back of the boat. And I'm like, what kind of knot <laughs> did you use? I'm like, aha, the knot app, right? So I dialed Don't in drop the it in the water, though. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. So... Uh, what I really liked about that example is that Columbia Sportswear doesn't sell rope. Right. right. They're not in the rope business. They're not in the knot business. But yet their customers who need outdoor gear are typically outdoors. Right. And in some cases when you're outdoors, like in my case recently, you need to know how to tie knots. So what they have done is sort of transcended the transactional. They've created value that's not about their product. It's not about jackets. Right. But they've been able to insert their company into a circumstance, being on the boat with your kids, right. that normally they wouldn't have even been a part of. And that's a really interesting way to do marketing. And, and that requires some research. You have to really get a, a good handle on 
not just what do people want to buy from you, but what are their lives like? Like what, what in terms of their lifestyle can you help with? And so there's lots of different data sources that you can use to try and get at that. The best way, of course, is to actually talk to your customers, which I know sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. Internet guy says, talk to your customers, stop presses. Uh, <laughs> But that's what that's what Columbia did. They actually interviewed a bunch of their customers and found that, in fact, uh, most of them have their smartphone with them when they're hiking or camping or whatever, either for GPS purposes or just for safety purposes. You right. know, somebody turns an ankle or whatever. So that was the that that finding that outdoors people have their phones was the genesis of that whole not idea. I'm gonna have to find that app because uh, my my it's son cool. and I do some camping, so we'll. Uh... Uh, definitely use that. Yeah, you know, if you weren't, I was not in the Navy, right? So I yes. don't know. I don't know <laughs> that many knots. You know, it's not really. I didn't go to knot class, yeah. um, and so it's yeah, it's pretty useful. I, I I totally get amazed when I see people just you know whip out their knowledge of knots and right, right, <laughs> and then You're they like, start saying talking about a like, 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 pig knot, like yeah, okay, sure, if you say so. The rabbit through the hole around the tree, back in the hole. Nothing. That makes it actually harder to understand, not easier. I've found. <laughs> So uh, it seems like you, you really advocate em employees getting involved in, uh, in social media marketing. Um, how so? Uh, you know, I, I talked about that a fair amount in my first book, The Now Revolution, uh, and, and that book was, was I don't know, two and a half years ago. Uh, and just now is that principle actually being, being executed on in companies. Right. We do a fair amount of consulting on that point as well where um, – you know the most important audience for for content for things that you create like the not app is actually your employees because if right. they don't know the story you're trying to tell you're you're dead right if right. your employees don't even know uh, what you have to offer that's valuable why should your customers know and that's the exact opposite of how most people think um, and then on social media in particular there's a huge now movement towards uh, kind of decentralizing social so yeah you've got your official at account and your Facebook account and and you know the things that the company has but but every single person who works for you is a potential ambassador, and how do you get them to do that to be part of your uh, of your marketing? You know what we what we say is that everybody in your company is in marketing, mm -hmm. whether they are in marketing or not. Right, uh, and, and that's the key to the game. Yeah. What do you say to uh, uh, some of the companies where you have employees maybe being a little apprehensive about wanting to get involved? Good. Um, be apprehensive. We. We very much believe um, that you should not require employees to do that, mm -hmm. that, that it should be optional. And, and for this reason, Sheldon, if you don't love social media, mm -hmm. you probably suck at social media. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much the truth. <laughs> right? so, so what you want to do is find employees um, who actually really love social media, right. you know, regardless of whether they're using it. For business, uh, if you know th there are people in your organization, I guarantee it, right? Um, even if you're a small company, who are using Pinterest at home, right. who are doing Instagram at home, who are writing a blog at home, mm -hmm. who are all over Facebook at home, those are the people that you want to encourage to participate because they kind of understand the culture of social media. This idea of well, you're a vice president, or you're a director, or you're a manager, or you're in sales, therefore by edict we insist that you get on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a bad, bad idea. <laughs> well, uh, Jay, your uh, your book, like I said before, is so much filled with uh, uh, with content and great tips, and um, and equally, you know, I, I I've seen a, a presentation, you know, talking with you talking about utility, and uh, I mean, you really uh, you know, talk about this stuff that's in here really well, and um, and it's it's a lot of uh, uh, great information that an audience can digest and uh, a lot of take home value I think. So, Thank you, yeah one of the things I'm really happy about is that there are examples not only in the book but in the presentation uh, of companies of all sizes, right? right? So big companies, small companies, every time I give this presentation or versions of it I always customize it um, right. so that there are examples from people in the room because I think it's really really important to connect it for people to say oh we can do that, we should do that. There are people in our industry or in our company uh, doing this already, and that makes it a lot more uh, resonant with people. And you know, I've I've done this with um, you know big big audiences and small audiences, mm -hmm. big companies, small businesses, and it and it really works uh, across the board. The book's a New York Times bestseller. It, it keeps uh, it keeps rocking. Right. So uh, I'm really happy with it. Well, and and, it, and you really uh, promote the idea too that uh, uh, not one size fits all. 
uh, which is great. So what works for one company doesn't necessarily work for another. So um, because I think it's that, about what their because it's about their customers, right? Yeah, it's about what yeah. their customers need, and 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 what your customers need and what my customers need is not the same thing. So right. you can't just say, well, here's what here's what Eagles Talent does. Let's just take that playbook. It doesn't. It's right. not that easy. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Jay, thank you very much, and uh, uh, I look forward to uh, talking with you again, and hopefully we'll we'll see each other soon. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Elm. I appreciate it.